Recently, Cadex released their new GM series of gimbals designed to be used with their Avatar HD system that allows you to actually do pass-through head tracking via the wireless system on goggles such as the Goggles L and hopefully in the future the Goggles X. The interesting thing though is at the same time of releasing this they also released the GT high power 2 watt VTX. What's a bit strange though is that this VTX doesn't actually officially work with these gimbals with regards to that pass through because this VTX doesn't have the USB port connection that you need for connecting the gimbal to the VTX. There is though a way of doing this and I'm going to walk you through this process today. Just to be clear, this does involve actually tearing the VTX down but don't worry, it isn't too difficult but you are going to need some soldering skills and I'll walk you through the process to show you how you can actually do that pass through head tracking even though it doesn't have the external port. Now, with regards to compatibility, the GM series of gimbals are compatible directly with the Cadex VTXs that have the new connector for the USB update cable. Now, the original VTX came with this connector here, which was a four pin connector. We then had one of their smaller VTXs, which again came with a four pin connector, but just smaller. And then the later VTXs, the version twos, the Moonlight, all come with the USB cable that has this six pin connector. Now this connector has the four wires for USB, but it also has an additional UART. That is a separate UART compared to the normal TXRX that you have on the side. And this additional UART allows you to control the gimbal directly via the Cadex ear unit. Now, this is actually a problem for the new GT VTX because this doesn't actually have that USB update connector. This VTX is updated via the micro SD card. It is actually a similar setup to the Moonlight, but the Moonlight still has that USB connection, whereas unfortunately this VTX does not. If I just move that gimbal box out of the way, you can see we've got TX and RX2 on the side. In fact, they've pinned the pads out twice. What they should have done is put a TX and RX2 on that connector there and a TX and RX3 on that connector there, but unfortunately they didn't. However, there is a way to use this gimbal with this VTX because there is an internal TX and RX3 port. But to get to this, you're going to need to tear it down. You're going to need to go into this top side because the pads are located on the back of the RF board. The first thing we need to do, though, is remove our fan. So we're going to need to undo the four large screws located underneath. These are the screws that hold the camera MIPI cable in place, but also go right through to hold the fan in place as well. Once we have then removed these, we're going to need to then very carefully place the fan to one side, making sure that we don't damage the cables. And then we're going to need to take a small Phillips and then remove the top section of this VTX. You don't actually have to remove the top metal plate from the PCB because the part we're looking for is actually located underneath. We are though going to need to remove this clamp for the antennas and move it to the side. And then what we're going to need to do is very carefully open the VTX up, flip it over, and then what we're looking for is the pads located on the bottom of the PCB, and it is this pad here and here located right next to the MIPI cable that goes down internally into the VTX. Now, these are very small pads. I will put this under the microscope in a minute so you can see it. They are labeled TX and RX3. And what we're going to need to do is connect some wires to this to bring them out externally into the VTX, allowing us to then connect it to our gimbal. 
Now, looking a little bit closer there under the microscope, you can now see our pins easily. We've got our TX3 at the top and our RX3 at the bottom. Now, these are tiny pads. Just to show you, this is one of the pre-tinned wires that come with it. And you can see there, even this is a little bit too long. So I'm going to need to trim this back before soldering on. Now, with regards to the pinout on this, Cadex do actually show it on their manual for the gimbal. You've got RX and TX pinned out on the connector as follows. So this little connector that I've got here, you can see there we've got red, black, brown, then green. In this order, the brown would be RX, which would go to TX, I guess, on the gimbal. And then the green would be TX which on the gimbal, which would go to RX on this board. It isn't a major issue if I do get these the wrong way around. You can always swap them around in the connector. But here and now, looking at this, you've got RX labelled there. So that needs to go to the TX on this here. So it's going to be brown to the top and green to the bottom. Okay, so the wires are on. Sorry about that. It was a bit of a, a challenge one because I was actually doing it by eye externally without magnification because there's a bit too much of a delay in my recording camera. You're not going to see it here simply because I'll synchronize the audio. But the reality is it's about three quarters of a second behind and it was giving me a challenge. But anyway, we are back on. So it's now time to get this VTX back together. Okay, so now it's time to try and get this all together. Now, the next challenge is we to bring these wires out of the VTX. They're not going to be able to come out of that side there because there's no gap. The only gap is around this area here where you've got your TX and RX and your power input, although there really isn't a lot of space. There's no easy way to get the wiring out of this. And I'm going to be honest with you. I think you're going to need to cut a gap in this metalwork because if you don't the wires are going to get trapped so if we just try i'm going to bring them up there through the middle of the coils okay i'm then going to pop the vtx back together carefully making sure that the bind button goes in on this side here like it does and then there you can see the wires coming through which is fine but what's going to happen then is as i push this lid down that is going to get sandwiched because that needs to fall into this gap. And this is going to get sandwiched between the metal side and this. So we need to take a notch out of the side of this metalwork because that's the only way to get the wires to come through cleanly. Okay, so I'm not sure what this metal casing is made of, but it's not machined aluminium because with a bit of a forcing of pliers, it's actually snapped a chunk off. I was going to try and just sort of bend it out a little bit to allow the wires to come through with these, but instead a big chunk of it has snapped off. Anywho, that sort of solves our problem. So what we'll do is pop our VTX together like that, and then you can see that there's now... A much bigger gap for the wires to come through. I'm not going to pretend it's clean and tidy, but at the very least, it works. So let's screw the top sections back on and then we will reassemble the VTX and then we will give it a try. Okay, so just to demonstrate this, I've put it all back together. It's wired up temporarily on the bench. We have the Cadex gimbal. I have a set of goggles L in my hand. And yes, as you can see, it works fine. So you absolutely can connect the gimbal to the Avatar GT. But you're going to have to do a little bit of butchering if you want it to work through the Cadex UART pass-through. So, as you've seen, it's not particularly difficult, but you will need to tear it down and you will need to solder onto those small pads. Now, as I said at the start, it is very strange that Cadex chose to release this VDX at the same time as the gimbals, yet 
it's not really compatible. Hopefully, you never know, there might be a firmware update that at least would allow you to use this with the GT on the external UR, although that would mean you wouldn't be able to use OSD. That's not going to help people who fly, but it might help, say, ground-based situations where you're not bothering with the OSD at all. That would probably be a good midpoint option for people. And then you have the internal UART if you're someone who wants to fly with it, as I've shown you here today. Now, that's it from me on this one. I hope you have found this video useful. If you have, please do let me know what you think below. If you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please do consider checking out the links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. It is only through the support of my patrons I'm able to keep making content on this channel. And if you'd like to support us, please consider checking it out. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my patrons. We would not be able to do this without your support. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.